Majority of people have grilled hamburgers and hot dogs, but grilling the perfect steak, now that's a whole other challenge. So I spoke to a barbecue professional to find out how to reverse sear a steak like the best of them. Mark, you are a professional griller and you know what is reverse searing and what steaks are the best to reverse sear. Reverse searing is very simple. You cook a steak at a low temperature, either indirect in a grill, in a pellet grill, or in an oven until it's almost cooked and then you sear it at a super high heat. And steaks that work well for this are thick, thick steaks, ribeyes with a bone, New York strips, maybe even a sirloin, but it has to be probably, you know, one and a half inches thick minimum. Okay, so thicker the better when you want to reverse sear a steak. Now there's a science to this though, so explain the science. You don't want to put lots of high heat through the outside of the steak to cook the inside of the steak. Because if you do that, you're going to end up with a gray line all the way around the outside. So if you take a room temperature steak and you cook it at a low temperature, then the outside of the steak isn't having to get that aggressively high heat through and you end up with edge to edge, coast to coast paint. Okay, so give your top three tips for reverse searing a steak. How does one do it? You want the steak to be room temperature. Never start with a thick steak that's ice cold out of the refrigerator. Number two, you need to go low and slow. Uh, you need to cook it at 225 degrees, 250 degrees, and then at the end, you wanna get it ripping hot after it's rested for 10 minutes to get that sear. And you don't want grill lines. Grill lines are for steak posers. <laughs> you want that crust all the way across the top because that's one of the best parts of the steak. And if you have grill lines, anywhere where there aren't grill lines, you haven't gotten a good caramelization on the outside of the steak. I never knew that. And also too, with reverse searing, this is something that you can kind of pre-prep before you're entertaining people, right? Yeah, you can do the low and slow part and take the steak to say 130 degrees and then just let it rest on the counter for up to an hour. And then when you're ready to eat, sear it two to three minutes aside, get that beautiful crust. You don't even need to wait to cut it because there won't be any carryover temp, slice it up and dig in. And what about seasoning your steak? This is really important. Season aggressively before and after you cook. That's the main mm -hmm. difference why steaks taste so good in a restaurant. You want a little bit of fat, maybe some butter or some olive oil, and you want some salt after you've sliced it when it's fully cooked. Mark, where can people go for more information? IDBeef.org has information on all the different cuts of meat and awesome recipes. Thank you so much. You got me hungry. Awesome. Thank you so much.